KSII 12 News at 6 starts right now. An uncertain political future. The options Congressman Mark Walker is currently considering for 2020 as Senator Tom Tillis officially files for re-election. Plus, raising the legal age to buy tobacco. What some lawmakers in Washington are considering and how that measure could lower your health care bill as well. Plus, well, a cold, dreary start to the week throughout the Piedmont Triad, and it's only expected to get even colder as the week goes on. Of course, on the positive side of things, this time a year ago was a much different picture. Absolutely. On December 9th, 2018, a major snowstorm moved right through the Piedmont Triad, dropping more than a foot of snow in some areas, even shutting down the area for about a week. I remember it. I know you all remember it. Chief Meteorologist Laney Pope does too. She is tracking precipitation, but right now, thankfully, just in the form of rain, right? Yeah, so unusual last year's storm, first in December, and for that much snow to fall. The storm total was 12.8, but on December December 9th, the 24 hour snowfall total was 12 inches and it makes it the third. Yeah, the third highest total snowfall in one day. We actually had 20 inches in a day, but that was back in 1927 and in 1930, also a December snow event at 14, almost a half inches of snow. As you mentioned, it's cold out there and it's wet, but it is not snowing, right? And the roads, of course, are just damp. We don't have a lot of measurable rain coming down right now, but we do still have fog and a fine mist, and we've got the chill in the air. You don't have to go too far to find the warmer temperatures. They are just to our east, but we've got this narrow slice of cold here. The warm front is pushed in from the coast, but hasn't quite made it into the triad. It will later on tonight. It's also the reason we've got the fog and the mist out there and it's the reason the temperatures will likely go up in the overnight, which is also unusual for us. We'll be close to 50 degrees by morning. We'll look for kind of a steadier rain to return to the forecast by early tomorrow. And yes, yeah, some soaking rain tomorrow, even some mountain snow. Temperatures are tumbling and we have the potential for maybe some freezing rain. So we've got a lot to talk about. So stick around. And as Laney continues to keep us updated on the chance for that freezing rain in the Piedmont Triad, the Greensboro Fire Department says now it's really the time for you and your family to get prepared for winter. Get ahead of it. Our Kirsten Gutierrez is in Greensboro with winter weather safety reminders. While it's only rainy and cold here on Battleground Avenue, now is the time to prepare before a storm hits. This time last year, some areas across the Piedmont Triad saw more than a foot of snow. Tonight, the snow has stopped, but the freezing rain has taken its place. With possible winter weather, first responders are getting prepared. We've already gotten a report this morning as to the potential of the ice coming in this weekend. Uh, so we'll keep up to date on that. Our personnel will check their equipment daily anyway, um, but we'll start uh, checking it extra uh, often, more often, uh, just to make sure that that equipment's ready to go just in case of an emergency. As for families across the Piedmont Triad, Deputy Chief Dwayne Church has a few reminders. Some of the biggest problems we see uh, along with ice and snow are power outages. Um, and with those power outages, a lot of people use generators, portable generators. Church says generators should stay outside at least six feet away from your home. So that carbon monoxide, you can't see it, you can't smell it. So it's a, a killer and it will eventually kill someone with those increased carbon monoxide levels. He says carbon monoxide can be deadly in a matter of minutes. And when warming up your car, make sure it's in an open space and not in your garage. Space heaters are another big issue during this time of year. We want you to keep that space heater at least a three uh, foot circumference around that space heater. Keep it clear of drapes, clothes. Um, keep your animals, small animals, and your children away from that also. And if ice or snow heads this way, they stay off the road as much as possible. If there is ice on the road, uh, slow down and then increase your following distance is a big, big key. Another suggestion is always having a bag prepared with food, water, medications that you might need, blankets, and always having a cell phone and letting people know where you're going and when you should arrive. In Greensboro, Kirsten Gutierrez, WXI 12 News. Good advice, and of course, another way to be prepared for whatever winter may throw at us is to download the free WXII 12 News mobile app. You've got the forecast, live radar, and weather alerts whenever you need them.
In Commitment 2020, Senator Tom Tillis is officially running for re-election. He filed his paperwork today in Raleigh with his wife by his side. Senator Tillis says he needs six more years in the Senate to complete the work that he started back when he was a state lawmaker. He yes, says the same issues that he championed while he was Speaker of the legislature, namely tax cuts and regulatory reform, are the same ones he's working on now as a representative in the federal government. The senator is also touting his work with President Trump. President Trump has endorsed me because he knows on the matters that matter most. I've been with him more than virtually anybody in the, the delegation here in North Carolina and anyone in the U.S. Senate. Thank you very much. Right now, five Democrats are competing for Senator Tillis's seat. They will all square off in the primary. Trevor Fuller, Steve Swenson, Cal Cunningham, Atul Goel, and Erica Smith have all officially filed their paperwork. Cunningham has far outraised the rest of the candidates with $1.7 million. Senator Tillis has raised more than $4.2 million so far this year. Meanwhile, Republican Congressman Mark Walker is continuing to weigh his options ahead of next year's election season. His political future right now is quite uncertain because of those newly approved congressional maps. It turns his seat into one that heavily favors Democrats. The congressman's spokesperson confirms reports that he has commissioned polls testing his primary chances against two fellow Republican representatives, Ted Budd and Senator Tom Tillis. Walker's office says all options are on the table right now, including the possibility that Walker would sit out next year and then I, Senator Richard Burr's seat in 2022. Back in 2016, the last time Burr won re-election, he announced that this would be his last term in the Senate. Congressman Walker has until next Friday to make a decision about his short-term political future. And in other Commitment 2020 news, Governor Roy Cooper is also running for re-election. This morning, he was in Greensboro speaking at the Farm Bureau Annual Convention. He spoke with WXII about why he says he deserves another term. We've been able to stop a lot of bad legislation that's been promoted by this Republican General Assembly. We're also putting at the top of agenda uh, it, supporting public education and our teachers and expanding health care and uh, protecting our water and air. Uh, we're sending a strong message across this country and across the world that North Carolina is open for business. We've had two record-breaking years of new jobs being announced in our state. So we're excited about the work we have done, but we know that there is a lot more to do. So far, Dan Forrest and Holly Grange have filed as Republicans in the race for governor. North Carolina's primary election is set for March 3rd. That is Super Tuesday. The Democratic National Convention is going to be July 13th through the 16th. That's in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And then that's followed by the Republican National Convention in Charlotte, August 24th through the 27th. The general election day is November 3rd. Mounting political friction and sparks today on Capitol Hill as members of the House Judiciary Committee battle over the impeachment of President Donald Trump. Today's hearing could be the last public one in the House. So Democrats and Republicans are making their final appeal over whether or not the president should be impeached. Democrats claim that the president abused his office by urging Ukraine to investigate his political well, rivals and withheld military aid to force what he wanted. Republicans say there's no proof of that, just presumptions. Due, today's, due to today's coverage of the impeachment inquiry hearing, Days of Our Lives did not air. We will will air it at 3 a.m., so set your DVRs. Crime now. The man accused of shooting and killing another man in Greensboro is being held without bond tonight. Rayvon Wall is charged with murder in connection with the death of Aldrich Strong. Officers found the victim shot several times at an apartment on Spring Garden Street just before 10 in the evening on Friday. Strong died at the scene. Officers found Wall in an apartment building not far from the shooting scene. A man charged with stealing a Guilford County ambulance, then leading state troopers on a chase, is being held on a million dollars bond right now. Daniel Williams had his first court appearance today. He's accused of taking that ambulance on Saturday night from Cone Health Wesley Long Hospital. Officers chased down Williams and ended up arresting him on Business 85, not far from Holden Road. One officer suffered minor injuries in the process. Investigators are still trying to figure out how he got the keys to that ambulance in the first place.
Winston-Salem-based BB&T and SunTrust are now Truist Bank. The combined banks announced today that their merger is now complete. Truist, which is headquartered in Charlotte, is now the country's sixth largest bank and serves about 10 million people. Now, the full transition to Truist will happen over the next two years, and until then, people will continue to use their BB&T or SunTrust branches. North State Communications is being sold for $240 million by a South Carolina fiber company. Officials with the High Point based company say that it will merge with Segro, which is headquartered in Columbia. Now, the deal was unanimously approved by North State Board of Directors. It still has to be approved by shareholders. The deal is expected to close in the third quarter of 2020 if it is approved by regulators. North State says that the merger will help them enhance both residential and business services. As the work continues on Business 40 throughout downtown Winston-Salem, new exit numbers are being installed across roughly 13 miles of highway. Crews are going to start working on eastbound Business 40 at US 52 on December 17th, then work towards Sandy Ridge Road in Colfax, and then work westbound back to Winston-Salem after that. The work should be finished by December 20th. Crews are going to be out there between 9 in the evening and 6 in the morning each day, and one lane of highway will be closed while they're doing that work. Once this round of renumbering is all done, crews will then change the exit numbers on the west side of the project from Cloverdale Avenue all the way to I-40. On Capitol Hill, a new bipartisan agreement on health care costs has support from Republicans and Democrats in Congress and the White House as well. The legislation is designed to limit surprise medical bills when patients are treated outside of their insurance networks. Sponsors say that the measure will also raise the legal age to buy tobacco from 18 to 21.